Hi and welcome back. Firstly, thank you so much. We've just reached 10,000 subscribers and I'm so happy. I never would have dreamed that this channel would be so popular and it's all thanks to you. So thank you so much and I hope you continue to share this wonderful painting journey with me. So today to celebrate, I'll be painting this. Um, it's an image from um, a video made by one of my favorite YouTube um, channels at the moment, Simon, a bloke in the woods. He's an outdoor enthusiast who produces some incredible videos of journeys in his canoe and on foot through rivers and forests and things like that, um, cooking and making things and wild camping, etc, etc. And he's kindly let me paint this screenshot from one of his videos and I shall link to him below. Please check him out. He's got some amazing content. Right, I've got a strong cup of espresso coffee, so let's paint. I've drawn in the horizon line and the rough position of my poles. My board is at about 45 degrees, so gravity will help with the painting. And I'm going to wet the sky and then the water uh, with my large Pro Art Haki brush or Hake brush. I'm wetting the paper with horizontal marks because that will help or horizontal brush strokes that will help when I put the paint on for the paint to settle in the kind of orientation um, that will make it look more like water. Firstly I'm going to sweep some fairly dilute raw sienna across the horizon line and across the water. This will give us a little bit of a glow hopefully. Next I'm going to take some Payne's Grey and there might be a bit of indigo in it because I've got some on my palette and I'm bringing it across the top. I'm going over the masking tape as well to make sure I get a nice dark edge when I remove the masking tape at the end of the painting. You can see the paints beginning to diffuse and run down slightly and soften in the sky. Now I'm using what's called a dry brush stroke where you sort of hit and miss the bumps on the paper, the texture on the paper, and leave some white sparkle and that really helps to look like water. I'm now darkening up the bottom in the same way, running up the dark paint um, against and over the masking tape so I get a nice dark edge. And while the paper's still wet, I'm just going to very gently um, blend some of the brush strokes out slightly, um, soften back here and lighten it there and extend the stroke slightly in other places just until I feel that the water looks kind of balanced enough with enough of the white sparkle on it. I'm just going to gently soften back the sky a little, a little bit. I think that's that's looking okay at the moment. The paint is still diffusing on the wet paper and, and slightly running down because of gravity in the sky just here. It might be running down a little bit too much because it's starting to look a bit like a a bit like a, a rain cloud and rain in the distance. So I'm just trying to decide at the moment, and I think I will, I'll turn the board. If I tilt it this way, it'll stop the cloud from running downwards and it'll bring it more this way. It'll diffuse more evenly. Um, so I'm using gravity to help me to paint and soften the bottom of that cloud. So I'm just going to leave it turned like that just for a few more seconds um, just to arrest that downward flow a, a little bit. Now that should be fine and the paper is still damp so before it, it dries it's time to put in a distant tree line. Now I've got quite a rich mixture of Payne's Grey on my Harky brush just on the tips and I'm going to run it along the horizon um, in sort of a series of blobs really but the idea is is that they will diffuse and soften on the wet page and end up looking like a row or a line of distant trees on the distant shore. 
Now I just want to flatten the distance shore off a bit so I've cleaned out um, a medium harky brush, got a nice chisel edge and with the damp brush I'm just sliding it across the bottom just to straighten up the horizon line a little bit. I don't need to have any reflections running down here because there's, there's quite a lot of light reflected um, on the water there and I don't think from that distance the reflections would show very much. And just one more thing before it dries, I think just to use a clean damp flat brush I'm going to pull out a few horizontal lines of paint, that's where I'm lifting the paint out on the brush, wiping the brush clean again and dry and then going in again and these will help to add uh, reflection lines and maybe the impression or suggestion of, of ripples in the finished painting. Keep wiping your brush um, as you do this, otherwise you'll end up transferring some of the paint that you lift back onto the page. And I think that that looks okay. All the horizontal lines and marks all add to the effect of it looking like nice fairly still water. Now I'm just going to use my rigger brush just to try and link the horizon line and the distant trees a little tiny bit. I just feel that they might it might have might be drying to look a bit too blobby at the moment. But I'll see how it dries. If it looks a little bit blobby then I'll go in again. Okay so it has dried a bit blobby, it's completely dry now so I'll go in with some wet paint and I will just gently try to use some fairly dark paint on a small calligraphy brush to link some of those darker shapes a little bit. Where it was looking a little bit um, unevenly painted I found it a, a bit distracting. I think it took the eye away from the rest of the painting. So I'm just making it look a little bit more uniform um, with, with the dark sort of linking marks. Just keep going all the way along, just um, Smudge it with your finger if you need to, um, soften back maybe with a little bit more water, something like that if it goes on too dark. Just adjust it until it looks right. Now I'm much happier with that. And now I'm going to use a number three rigger and a number one rigger alternately with Payne's Grey and I'm pulling across curved lines to give the impression of reeds and grasses just just running across this foreground corner just something and nothing really just um, just these little marks to say just to give an impression I don't want the eye to um, stop at these reeds I want the eye to follow the reeds through to the poles and the cormorant sat on top of the, um, the pole that's sticking out of the water Now I'm starting my marks on the masking tape again so that when the masking tape is peeled off then the reeds look as if they're just bobbing into you know being blown by the wind into the picture into the frame so to speak and not just stopping and starting at the, the edge of the painting. Almost there with your painting just do as much or as little of this as you as you like or as you think the picture needs to keep it balanced. Now 
Right, now for the poles. I'm using my half inch flat brush and I'm following my pencil lines quite carefully because I want this pole in particular, this focal point pole, which the cormorant is sitting on, to be straight, well nice and vertical at least, even if it does look a little bit um, bumpy and weathered. Right, you put in the second pole, which is a little bit further back, so I'm going to make that thinner. And the furthest pole back, and there are others in the same sort of alignment as this, so I'm keeping my flat brush straight. Um, I'm putting some poles slightly leaning, some shorter than others, but I want a nice row of poles across um, this left side of the painting. So that's the poles done. Uh, but we've lost the top of the poles slightly against the background trees. So I'm going to take my um, Jelly Roll white gel pen and just put a little line across the top of each pole just to look a bit like the maybe the sun sunlight catching on the poles. But that serves to pull them out and just make them stand out from that line of distant trees a little better. Yeah, that's better. I'll just zoom in slightly. No, that's the wrong way. Zoom in slightly and now I'll use the rigger brush and I'll just paint in the her um, heron, cormorant that I've drawn in in pencil to get the shape right first and then just paint in the lines trying to make sure that it does look like the silhouette of a cormorant rather than a penguin I think that's going to be okay Now the last thing is the reflections. I think as I said earlier, because there's so much light on the water, I don't want the reflections to be too overt, so I'm just using grey and the rigger brush and I'm just bringing down a sort of wiggly line from each one, softening back with my finger if I need to. Um, it's just the impression of a reflection more than anything. softening back if I need to. Again on this side just using the grey and then as we come to the slightly closer one a slightly darker grey and a slightly stronger line but still a sort of loose and wiggly line. And finally for the main focal point pole. Um, I'm using a very small flat brush and some Payne's Grey. I'm just going to sort of dab it on for the first few strokes and then turn it into like a wiggly line where they get a little bit wider towards the bottom of the picture. And that's it. We're finished. So here's the finished painting with the tape removed. And thanks so much again to Simon Bloke in the Woods for letting me use his wonderful screenshot. And do take a look at his channel. And thank you everyone for your support um, and subscribing. 10,000 subscribers. Just amazing. I'm absolutely thrilled. Anyway, thanks so much and I'll see you again soon. Take care and bye.